Hi, welcome to Take 5, a daily Bible time, studying the New Testament by chapters. Today is February 28th, and we're in Acts chapter 19. So the word of the Lord was growing mightily and prevailing, Acts 19, verse 20. Acts 19 deals with greatly with the Holy Spirit, with his being the presence of God within the believer, the power of God working for the believer, and the problem faced by disbelievers. First, the Spirit of God is God's presence within the believer. In Ephesus, Paul came upon about a dozen men who had been baptized by John the, ba by John the Baptist or by one of his disciples. They had heard the Savior was at hand, but were not aware of Jesus. In our Wi-Fi internet world of high-speed communication, the idea of not knowing significant information the moment it happens is difficult for us to conceive. Bible historians consider this encounter of Paul with the disciples of John the Baptist to have been at least 20 plus years following the resurrection, yet they still had not learned of it. We have difficulty imagining such a level of snow, slowness of communication, but that was a completely, completely different age. Upon hearing of Jesus, the men are baptized with the Holy Spirit, and as evidence of it, they begin speaking in tongues and preaching or prophesying. There are instances given where tongues are specifically mentioned in connection with the filling of the Holy Spirit, and times it is not. In Paul's writings to the Corinthians, he says, Now I wish that you all spoke in tongues, giving the understanding that not everyone does receive the gift of the tongues. More important is to prophesy, meaning to preach or to evangelize, the telling of others about Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit is next described, with extraordinary miracles being performed of healing and cleansing from evil spirits. Some were trying to duplicate what was being accomplished by God through Paul, even with their having no idea of who was Jesus. This is still done today in emotion-charged meetings conducted by such charlatans as Benny Hinn, Morse Carrillo, John Ann Vanzini, and others who are rapidly being exposed. In the example given in Acts 19, the demons themselves expose the falseness of the healers who were trying to use the name of Jesus, but were themselves not saved. The power of the Holy Spirit also led to cleansing of many from magic and witchcraft. Once exposed to the truth of Jesus Christ as the Savior, the Son of God, all these New Age works by Wayne Dyer, Tony Robbins, Joel Osteen need to be burned. All the horoscope books, numerology, fortune telling, all these need to be burned. Finally, the power of the Holy Spirit leads to problems for those who work and push against God's Spirit, illustrated here at the close of Acts 19 with the craftsmen and artisans for the temple of Artemis. A key to understanding what was being said is at the end of verse 25. Men, you know that our prosperity depends on this business. When God starts interfering with the prosperity or the pleasure of some individuals or groups, then they are going to work to stifle the preaching of God's word. A silversmith named Demetrius sought to create a riot against the preaching of Paul by revealing Christianity as being dangerous to their livelihood. Many joined in the mob mentality, verse 32 says, and the majority did not know for what cause they had come together. They simply attached themselves to the confusion. There are many who say they don't believe in God, but have no reason for their disbelief. It's all based on lies they hear from others with no shred of evidence to it. In the end, the crowd is quieted by the town clerk, whose argument is, men of Ephesus, what man is there, after all, who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of the image which fell down from heaven? So, since these are undeniable facts, you ought to keep calm and do nothing rash. The clerk calmed everyone by telling them a lie that had been repeated as truth for so long that they believed it to be true. The false beliefs of other religions, such as Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, had been repeated for so long that their followers believed them to be true. 
The common denominator shared is their hate for Christianity. Satan hates the believer. Not enough is said about that, and Christians are not prepared for it. We must learn to be strong in the Lord and be aware that the enemy wishes for our defeat. Only our Father's Spirit keeps us inwardly strong, so continue to be transformed into his likeness. Thanks for being here today. Now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live in his likeness. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye now.